Well, I was away last week from my dad's 70th birthday, Warren. Some of you will, might have met Warren before, big passionate Australian. Uh, he can, man, he can, he can talk, that guy. You think, you think I'm outgoing, you meet my dad, man. <laughs> Double me, you got him. Um, but uh, yeah, I had a real great time there. My dad's 70th, my mother-in-law's 60th, and my 36th birthday as well. So one year closer to 40. I'm coming for you, Lingy. Coming for you in the 40s, mate. Um, so get, getting closer. But I had such a great family celebration, such a great time together. Uh, and, then, and then everything just went great. Just everything was great the whole time. I took the boys with me. I took Josh and my little uh, two-and-a-half-year-old. And I also took Sam, my almost uh, six, soon-to-be-seven, you're old, and we just had such a great time. Then we get to the airport, everything's great. I've got, got all the bags, I've got Josh in one arm, uh, Sam's wheeling a bag, I've got another, another two bags as well. And, and I say goodbye, and like two minutes later, Josh just goes, blah, and he just vomits all over me, like huge vomit, all right? We're not talking a little, a little squirt, we're talking like, <laughs> anyway, and here I am, I'm totally covered. I've just put the bags down. Josh is covered, and uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm calling out, help! <laughs> Lady comes from the desk, brings me three face masks. Oh, thank you so much. So helpful right now. I'm like, I need tissues, I need stuff. And anyway, I'm like, what do I, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to the bathroom. I just, I just head to the bathroom, knowing I haven't got another shirt, but I've got so much vomit on me. If I start opening my bags and all that, it's just going to go everywhere. And so I head to the bathroom, and the tap's not working. It's one of those sensor taps. You know, the sensing you, come on, like, come on. Finally, little trickle. It's so slow. Within like, uh, within about two minutes, the whole thing was clogged up. It was like, I was like, oh, my goodness. How do I? It was just going everywhere. And anyway, finally, finally, I'm like, all right, that's, that's the max I can do of cleaning this shirt with this little trinkle of water. So here I am, shirtless, Josh is shirtless, he's actually in a nappy, and I'm like, oh, and, he's, and his nappy needs to be changed. Great, <laughs> need to change his nappy as well. And so here I am, I'm like, I don't have baby wipes, I haven't got anything, I'm like, I'm like a hot mess right now. And uh, luckily I was, in the, I was in the parents' room, they had a nappy, I got the nappy, and you know, changed him and, and figured that out. And then, and then I'm like, okay. I've got to get back to my bag. It's about 100 metres away. Do I either put on the vomit shirt and walk there or do I just go shirtless? Put your hand up if you just put on the shirt. Put your hand up if you just go shirtless. So that's what I did. 100 metres, I'm walking. i got no shirt on. Josh has no shirt on. He's in his nappy. I'm like, i got to gun it. Luckily, there, there weren't too many people. Joel's like, if I was there, I would have died. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was thinking when I get home, should I even tell this story? Like, <sighs> finally get there. Get to the bags. Oh, thank God I can get changed. He vomits again. He vomits again. <laughs> anyway, and finally a manager comes over, takes us to a staff bathroom. There's a shower there. I can wash it. I've just put on a jacket, no shirt, put on a jacket. And we get on the plane. He doesn't vomit again. And we're here. So we made it, everybody, in Jesus' name. I thought maybe God's reminding me because Australia was, we had such a good time. And he's like, yeah, it's not that good. <laughs> and then, then your last memory can be that. You can keep loving New Zealand and what you call. <laughs> Just joking. Well, I'm talking this morning. We better get into it. The title of my message is called Don't Bury It. Touch somebody and say, Don't Bury It. <laughs> Don't bury it. Don't bury what God has put in you. Don't bury your gifts and your talents. Don't bury your dreams. Don't bury it in Jesus' name. I've heard it said that the richest place on earth is the graveyard. Because here you'll find books that were never written, paintings that were never painted, songs that were never sung, business ideas that were never started, inventions that were never shared, cures that were never discovered, and dreams that were never fulfilled. 
Don't die with the dream in you. Don't bury what God has put inside of you. Can I get an amen this morning? So what are you going to do with the time that you have left on earth? And I've found that the worst thing in life is not money getting away from you. It's not even people getting away from you. The worst thing in life is when your time gets away from you. When you look back on your life and say, where did the time go? I wish I did this. I wish I did that. I wish I didn't give in to fear. The most valuable thing we possess is our time. In Ephesians 5 verse 16, Paul writing to the church of Ephesus, he says, be careful how you live. Be careful. Be careful how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity for the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. We want to know what the Lord's will is. We want to make the most of every opportunity we have in this life. In Matthew 25, I want to read the story of the parable of the talents, which will be kind of the main text that we use for this message this morning as I talk about don't bury it. I'd love you to turn there with me if you have a Bible or a device, uh, and it will also be on the screen as well. It's the parable of the talents, and I, just as we go into this story, we're reading it and looking at it thinking, we are the servants in this story, and Jesus is the master who traveled to a far country. It says this, the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and he delivered his goods to them. This is what God does. He gives us time. He gives us gifts and talents, gives us resource. To one, he gave five talents. To two, uh, sorry, to another, he gave two. And to another, he gave one talent. One talent, uh, just to... Uh, give some context, it's a lot of money. Uh, Roughly, say, a million dollars. It's almost 19 years worth of work. So on average, it's roughly between one, one and a half million. Um, We can't know for certain, but we know that one denarii is a day's work. And scholars vary in opinion, but they suggest about 6,000 denarii is one talent. So we're talking about 6,000 days work. All right, you with me? So we're talking if it's one town, a million dollars, two, two million, five, five million. Cool. Then in verse, uh, it, it says, he gave each according to his own ability. So it gives you what, what, what you can uh, steward well according to your ability. And immediately he went away on a journey. This is what Christ did. He came to the earth. He, he preached, he, he healed the sick, he came, and now he entrusts things to his followers. He entrusts, and he's going to come back one day. So it's like, go and do business till I come back. I'm going to come back one day. I'm going to return one day. But here, this is what I want to give you. He's using this as a story. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. He's done good. He's, he's doubled what he had. And likewise, he who received two gained two more. But he who had received one went and dug it into the ground. He hid his Lord's money. He buried it. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. You see, the master wants to know that we've been profitable with what he's given us. That we've been fruitful with what God has given us. With this life that God has given us, we've used it for his glory and for his purposes. We've been fruitful with it and profitable for his kingdom. So he, decide, so he who had received the five talents came and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me five. Look, I've gained you five more besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I'll make you a ruler over many things. So see, see the, the reward for faithfulness is greater responsibility to be able to take care of more now. Enter into the joy of the Lord. So there's a sense of this this reward when Jesus comes comes back and 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 and, you know in heaven there's this sense of there's rewards that we'll have. We're saved not by works, we're saved by the goodness and grace of God through faith. It's not because of what we've done. But in heaven there are rewards for how we spent our time here on earth, and the Bible is clear about that. And so here we go, we we then go, he received two talents, says, Lord, you gave me two. Hey, I gained you two more. 
I turned two million into four million. His Lord said, well done, good and faithful servants. He says, his servant. We're here as servants of God. We're not owners of what we have. We're servants. We're here serving God's mission and serving him. And he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joy. This is what we want to hear. Amen. This is what we want to, all of us want to hear. We want to be these servants in the story. We want to be the one that, God, you gave me this life. You gave me time. You made me good at cooking. You made me good at sport. You made me good with science and medicine. You made me good with my hands. You made me good at these things. And I have used my time. I've used my gifts. The things that you've given me, I have multiplied that. I've I've, I've been profitable for your kingdom. I've been profitable for your kingdom. It's not necessarily talking about I, I, I've grown my money per se. It's about what God has given you, finances, time, talents, gifts, how we've used that to grow God's family. Does that make sense? To multiply kingdom purpose. And this is what we want to hear, that God would consider us faithful with what he's entrusted us. Then it says, He who'd received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you've not sown, gathering where you've not scattered seed. And I was afraid. I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have it. Here, take what is yours. What a warped view this servant had of God. I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you have not sown. It's like he gave you a million dollars. I'm pretty sure he's just sown a million dollars. He says, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. You know, and I, I just hid what you gave me. God, I'm, I'm afraid. I didn't want to take a risk. I, oh, I was worried if maybe I'll get tired if I do this for you. Or, or maybe, oh, what are people going to think of me if I tell them about Jesus? And it says, I was afraid. And so I just hid it. I just held on to it. And, and if we see the response, the response was not, oh, that's okay. You thought I was hard. You thought I was, you, you did nothing with it. He says, you wicked and lazy servant. You just hid what I gave you. You didn't use it. You didn't use what I gave you. You hid it. You ought to have deposited my money in the bankers at my coming, so I would have received back at least my own interest. He didn't use it. He didn't invest it. He didn't grow it. And the master's response was, you wicked and lazy servant. Many of us would probably call that man faithful. He held on for 10 years. He held on to it for 10 years. He still got it. He, st- he showed up. He didn't lie about it. He, he, he said, yep, this is what I've got. You know, he, we would have maybe given him a award. 10 years of service, holding on to what God gave him. But, but, but Jesus didn't do that. Because it's, it, it's, it's not about just sticking around. It's about sticking around and being fruitful. Sticking around and, and, and showing progress. Sticking around and, and growing in your relationship with God. Sticking around and, and continuing on and, and impacting others for Christ. It's about fruitfulness. No doubt loyalty is a phenomenal trait. I value people that will stick around in the good and the bad. But it's not, it's, it's not just sticking around and having a bad attitude. <laughs> oh, here we go. I'm still here. Still showing up. Here I am, God. You know, no, no, no. That's not what he's talking about. It's, yeah, it's staying the course, but it's being fruitful. And so the response is, Jesus says, take the talent from him and give him to, give it to him who has 10. Because the more, whoever has, more will be given and he will have an abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the out of darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Pretty full on story here, but we see it in the context of Jesus has come to earth. He's entrusted us with a great commission to go into all the world and make disciples. He's entrusted us with gifts and talents. We we both have a, a, a corporate calling, which is to know God, to build his kingdom. We also have an individual calling wherever God has placed you, whether you're an accountant, a teacher, whether you work uh, in, the, in the media, in the entertainment, whether you work in construction, in technology, whatever that space is, there's, there's, a, there's a unique uh, assignments and things for you that God has given you. And he's coming back and, he, and the master is returning. He's going, what have you done with what I've given you? 
How have you used what I've given you for my kingdom purpose? And so here's just three quick thoughts that we learn from this. The first thing we realize is each of us have been given something. Might be a one talent. You might feel like I'm that one talent person. This is all I can do. Well, don't get frustrated about that. Because if you get faithful with Matt with that, if you use that for God's glory, he multiplies it. You get more poured in. Amen. So each of us have 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 something that God has given us. Different skills. Uh, this time that we have. I wonder what are the strengths and gifts that God has given you? Maybe you're great with kits. Maybe you're great with music. Maybe you love to research stuff. Maybe you love to uh, love hospitality. You love food. You love finances. You love cooking. You love business. You, you, you leadership. De- you know, you're good with details. If you're good with details, oh, well, man, awesome. How can you use that for God's glory? Maybe jump on the team. We wouldn't have forgotten communion this morning. (laughs) Counseling, sport, creativity, photography, graphics, design, so many things, so many gifts that God has given people here today. He's given each of us something. Touch somebody and say, you got something from God. God has given you something. And turn to the person on the other side and say, don't you bury it. Don't you bury it. Don't you bury it. Don't you bury it. You know what I've found? When we bury it, we can become cynical of others that are using it. When we bury it, we become cynical. Church isn't doing this. Look, they're not doing that. They're not doing that. It's because we've been too long in the grandstands and it's been a while since we've been on the field again. Can I encourage you that while there's still breath in your lungs, God still wants you in some capacity on the field. He still wants to use you for His kingdom, for His glory, and for His purposes. Amen? Amen, amen. God expects, the second thought I see from here is God expects fruitfulness and that we're profitable for His kingdom. And can I just encourage everybody, this, this doesn't mean, all right, all right. I'm, I'm going to be out every night, not with my wife and kids anymore. We've got to go for the kingdom. Can I encourage you that that's part of it? Taking care of your wife, discipling your kids. Man, maybe the greatest disciple you raise is going to be your children. Amen? So, so it, it's this beautiful, um, it, it's everything in balance, but having this heart to say, God, I want to be used for your kingdom. Amen? Amen, amen. So God expects fruitfulness and that we're profitable for his kingdom. That our lives grow, our lives expand and multiply the kingdom of God. This is his heart. He gives us a responsibility while we're here on earth. A responsibility to tell others about Jesus. That we'd use our time on earth to build and grow his kingdom. It's interesting we see the story in Matthew 21 verse 18 to 19. But Jesus curses the, f- the fig tree. You'll see it on the screen in a moment. It says early in the morning as Jesus was on his way back to the city. He was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, found nothing on it except leaves. He said to it, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. Now, it, you know, I've I've heard people say it wasn't even the season for fig trees. But Jesus has an expectation for fruit. Can I encourage you that Jesus expects fruit from us in every season? In every season, you know, when I, when I was a young adult, single, um, some of you guys are going, oh, where's this going? No, no, nothing juicy. Um, when, I was, when I was a single young adult, um, it, it was like five nights a week. I was like, I was at everything. I, 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 was at music, I was a part of the music team. I was a part of the youth team. I ran a life group. I was part of the bus ministry. I was part of everything. And then, then I got married and I realized you can't kind of do five, six nights a week anymore, plus, plus Sunday. Um, so, you've got, so, so I had to adjust. So, I'm, so now it was maybe kind of two or three, you know, and, uh, you know, and then you have kids. And then you, you can't, like, like I've got to be home for dinner and bath time because if anyone knows your young parents, like, that, that's you got to be there for that time, right? It's, it's on in that time. It can be chaos. It can be tantrum over here and water's flying out. And you've got to di- get dinner going. And, and so then you've got to adjust again. So if I'm going to be out, okay, that's going to be after we do dinner and baths, okay? Because I value my life 
And my, my wife, if I'm not there, I'm telling you, like, I'll, be, I'll get it. So, so, so you've got to adjust again, right? So every season looks different. You don't have to, don't have to compare to somebody else. They they're not in the same season, the same journey. But we can still serve God in every season. It just looks different. Same if you're older in this season. Can I encourage you? There's no expiry date on your life being used to serve God. Sometimes we limit ourselves. I, I love the hearts of, of the older generation that, that want to cheer on the young people. But can I encourage you? Keep cheering, but would you help them on the field too? Because there's so much experience and wisdom and grace that's in you that you are so valuable and so precious. It's not that it's just about the young people or it's, or it's just about it's both generations being used by God, coming together, and that creates such rich uh, ex- uh, wisdom and experience as we come together to be used by God. Amen? So Jesus expects fruit. Can I, encar- can I ask you this question? Is your life growing the kingdom of God? Is it growing the kingdom of God? Are you involved in building the church, God's people? Are you involved in, in a tangible way in doing that? What grows, what grows the kingdom? I'll talk about in, in a moment. But just the third thing from this passage I see is that God, not only He expects fruit, expects us to be profitable, but He rewards those who are faithful. He rewards those who are faithful. The servant who had multiplied that, that money, he was now in charge of cities. The servant who had multiplied the two talents, he was in charge of two cities. But the servant who didn't use what he had, it was taken away from him. You see, opportunities are not lost. They're just given to people who are fruitful. The servant said he was afraid. He hid it. He hid what's inside of him. And because of that, he missed the reward and he missed the joy of being used by God in this life. So this tells us that it is we can't, when we get up to heaven, we can't say, God, oh, sorry, I was too busy. Sorry, I was, ah, oh, I had this thing going on. He's going to come back to, what have you done with the time that I've given you with what I have asked you to do? Have we spent that time? What kind of legacy will you leave? I want to show these pictures. I'll show one first. And, you know, the, I talk about legacy and what do people say about you when, you know, when you're gone or what's the, what will they say on your, on your gravestone? Here's one, Susan Melody, destined to be a woman with too many cats. That was her statement. She will be remembered as a woman with too many cats. Wow, something to, look, something to work towards, right? Here's another one. This is by, here lies John Yeast. Pardon me for not rising. (laughs) I should have saved that for Father's Day. (laughs) It's a dad joke if I've ever heard one. But I I wonder what might be on your grave. He watched a lot of Netflix. Wow. Life changing. He always got cranky. Great. So good. What would perhaps be there? Are we living a life that's to leave a legacy for the kingdom of God? A legacy that people go, man, wow, that person, what they've done in their life. I pray we'd keep that in mind because this this life in comparison to eternity is quite short. But it's a preparation for eternity. And how we spend this time determines how we spend the time in the next life. So what will matter in eternity? Just, just, just quickly, a couple, of, a couple of thoughts here in regards to how we can make an eternal impact, sorry. How we can make an eternal impact. One is contributing to the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, verse 9 to 20, don't store up treasures on earth where moth and vermin rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up treasures for yourself in heaven. Where moths and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Store up treasures in heaven. Treasures in heaven. We're not owners here. We are stewards. We brought nothing into this world and we take nothing out. You know, you know we, we bring tithes and we bring offerings. And, and so many 
stories and so many people's lives that get touched. And, you know, Friday night with the youth, we were at Botany Town Centre handing out chocolates and, and with a little scripture. And, you know, and we got to... Uh, we got to pray for this, for this guy that was homeless and pray and, and encourage him about God's love. And, and there's O speaking to, uh, to uh, three guys of a different faith and sharing the gospel with them and, uh, you know, um, of different religions, sorry, sharing the gospel with them and, you know, and, and giving out. And, and, and even though you weren't part of it, did you know that your, your tithes and offerings you're giving funded so that we can do that, so that we could give out chocolates and so we can do that you know today the kids are doing disco and donuts you know and and you know your giving has contributed to that and or when we when we do you know all the hampers to people and you know it's your giving that contributes to that so even though you're not physically there I believe you get credit for that in heaven because you facilitated or gave towards that this is storing up treasures in heaven in other ways using our gifts and talents in church and in the world 1 Peter 4 verse 11 to 12 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have to serve others. Don't bury it. Use it to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength that God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Christ Jesus. To Him be the glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Use what God has given you. When you use it, it blesses others. It encourages others and it brings glory and honor to God. You know, there's a place for you here in this house. There's a place to be involved. Maybe it's the op- operations team that we're soon to launch. Maybe it's a, 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 you know, the host team. Maybe it's kids team. Maybe it's starting a life group. Maybe it's cafe. You know, there's a whole bunch of different areas. Youth, young adults. Worship team, tech. But there's a place that you can be involved because there's gifts and talents that you have. And, and God describes the church as the body of Christ. And you know when, when, when uh, uh, you, know, you might you know, come into a place and be like, man, this part's missing. Generally, it's because the, the, the part is here, but they're not yet using what they have. Every one of us has a part to play in God's house, in the church. And in, the, and in the body of Christ too. And as every one of us uses our part, now we've got a, a more full body, right? A more complete body. And we can have a greater impact in our generation for Christ. And the other way that we can make an eternal impact is individual lives we've touched. The individual people's lives that we touch. Who we shared our faith with. Who we shared the gospel with. People we led to Jesus as we, as we hear the Great Commission go into all the world and preach the gospel. People we've loved and helped. Jesus said, what you did for the least among you, you did it for me. How we love the poor and broken. How we love people that were going through a hard time. How we showed love to them and gave practical help and practical support. Jesus says in Matthew 25, the least, what you did for the least among you, you did it for me. And so if you've been sitting on your gifts, maybe you've been out of action for a bit, on the bench for a little while, and maybe you got injured or maybe hurt or maybe just, I don't know, just busy. Can I encourage you to pursue God and His heart? Because He loves you so much. And He so loves the people of this world. And He's got a plan and destiny for your life. And I've found, that, I've found this, the two most important days of your life is one, the day you were born, and two, the day you discover why. And you don't want to live your whole life without knowing that why. And can I encourage you that corporately for all of us, it's knowing God and building His kingdom is what it's ultimately about. But there'll be a specific way in which He wants to use you to do that in a specific place and calling. Friends, can I encourage you? Let's not go to the grave full of unfulfilled dreams, ideas, and desires. Let's make the most of this life. Use it for God's kingdom. Don't bury it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me just pray for you this morning. Lord, I thank you for every person in this place. Lord, I pray that we would be a people that don't bury 
the gifts, the talents, the things that you've put in our heart. Lord, even things that we've just kind of put to the side and maybe forgotten about. Lord, I pray we'd, in a sense, dig it up again. We'd dig it up again. We'd stir it up again, Lord. Lord, as Paul said to Timothy, stir up the gift of God that is in you. Lord, I pray that today ones would stir it up again. Even ones that feel a sense of the fire's gone out, I pray today, Lord, that stir it up again in Jesus' name. They would stir it up, Lord. Be used for your kingdom and for your purpose. Lord, I pray over every life, Lord, that we would not bury it. We come against apathy, fear, perhaps even wrong thinking, Lord, that's caused us to step back. And Lord, we pray that by your grace, we would step forward again to live this great life that you have for us. And as every eye is closed and every head is bowed, if you're in this place and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and